Hello there and welcome to episode 84 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma, I am your host and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada where I live with my family and our cat Yoda who happens to be lying on the sofa there and enjoying a little bit of morning lie down. We have a beautiful day in Ottawa today. We're kind of reaching that August feeling where sometimes you kind of have a tiny little sense of fall is around the corner. And hence my knitting has taken a turn as well for the more woolly in nature, which you will see soon. So thank you for joining me today and taking a bit of time out from your day to spend some time with me. Welcome to my living room, the little corner of my house that is neat, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, we live in an old house um, built in the 1940s and it is a small semi-detached house here in Ottawa and not particularly big and I kind of keep this corner looking as neat as possible. <laughs> so welcome to you whether you're returning or new. Glad to have you here. Um, before we start today, just a couple of little things. We've got two knit-alongs, which I will mention to you as I'm talking about my projects, but we've got the uh, sta uh, the Scrappy Stashy uh, Mal, as well as the LBK Nordic Cal. Both of those can be found on Ravelry in the Little Big Knits group or on Instagram using the hashtag for each of those. So a welcome to join, you are welcome to join either one of those. And um, obviously the Scrappy Stashy Mal is about using scraps and old stash from pre-December 2020 or leftovers or bits and bobs. And that goes until the end of 2023, so until December 31st. And then we have the LBK Nordic Cal, which is knitting and crochet. The other one is a make-along, so you can use fabrics as well. Actually, that makes me think. I've got Scrappy Stashy uh, projects today, a lot of them. So um, yeah, so the Nordic one is knitting and crochet and it is basically using yarn or designs from Nordic countries. So feel free to join us on that as well. Whips are welcome on both and though that one goes until the end of March uh, 2024. And I shared some of the projects I have for that last time. Also last time I mentioned that we have, that I'm going to be co-hosting a retreat in New Mexico at Ghost Ranch called Knitting New Mexico. Um, I'll leave the link below because the search engine is not working. So if you're interested, please use the link below, www.knittingnewmexico.com. The retreat is full now um, and we have a waiting list, but if you're interested, feel free to join the waiting list. Um, you never know. Uh, spot may come up and um, we'll see um, and yeah very much looking forward to that and uh, yeah very excited about that also again I mentioned already down below oops, sorry my husband's computer is going show notes are down below so please feel free to if you have any questions about anything I've said during the podcast please see below um, I've been a little bit bad, but I usually put them on uh, Ravelry as well. And you'll also see that I have a co coffee page down below as well, should you want to donate to the podcast. And thank you to those of you who have. All right, let's get going. Um, I've got a new sweater on. Mm. Mr. Stanley Hops wanted to say hello today. <laughs> All right. I have a new Tolsta tea. I showed this to you last time. This is the Tolsta by Rebecca Klo, also known as the Crea Bea. And this is a uh, lovely raglan top-down tea with some short row shaping. And I can't remember that the raglan construction has got a name. It starts with a C. Can't remember what it's called but it's a little bit different than uh, a regular raglan where you're just going straight down like that. And this was a really enjoyable knit. You'll know that I was using, um, well, the only one that's a, a scrappy stashy mal for me is this peach color, which is Langlino, but the other three grays are um, Katia Concept 
cotton cashmere or is it cashmere cotton um which is a mostly cotton yarn with a little bit of five to ten percent cashmere i think and it's a lovely soft cotton to work with and i just wanted to make this uneven stripe t-shirt so i'll get up so you can have a look at it i decided to do a split split hem this summer seems to be about split hems yeah and it's really nice lovely pattern lovely yarns i really really do like this cotton cashmere yarn by katya really very very much and i could see myself knitting with it yet again in the future i did also put a picture on instagram and i'll put it here so you can have a perhaps a better sense of the entirety of it so a couple of things that i think i would do differently next time there's nothing that I would do differently about the pattern because the pattern is really, really great. The Katya concept I've used before and I used it. I think I'm going to go deal with that phone situation. I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Hopefully I won't be interrupted anymore by noises and phones, but family life does happen. So they do happen. All right. I think I was telling you about this yarn. So I used this yarn last year to make an Afra by Isabel Kramer, a sweater that I love. I've worn a lot. And I realized that I used 3.5 millimeter needles for that one. And it has kept its shape really nicely. Um, I do find sometimes the neckline stretches a little bit on that one. But I used four millimeter with this one and it's stretched a little bit more obviously it's a looser gauge but what i find is that after a day or two of wearing this the sweater has kind of stretched out the neckline is even more open the sleeves seem more baggy and i made it for it to be a loose sweater but the the sleeves get like really baggy and and i find that i need to wash it so that was one little note to self I could totally see myself doing this again. I just love the stripes. Like it's so fun that, and it was a lot of fun to make. I thought I could easily see myself doing um, another version with different leftovers and colors. And I think that I would be very mindful of the needle size. Then this pattern is knit at a loose gauge. Um, but I suspect you wouldn't experience that with wool so much. It wouldn't stretch. But I think with the cotton nature, that's at least that's what's happened to me. Um, so, yeah, a little note to self there about that. But it's still just a great top. And I wear it with this jean skirt that I have that I actually thrifted at one point. And, yeah, I just really, really enjoy it. So that is my first finished object um, and it does work for the scrappy stashy mail because of that. It doesn't fit into the Nordic cow, obviously. Um, before I go on to the next knitting finished object, because I do have another knitting finished object, I think I'll show you a little bit of a sewing finished object, which is knitting related as well. And that is my tea cozy. It is finished and just so you can see it. So I did a couple of things since the last podcast besides completely finishing it. Um, I did the stitching around here, which I used a rather bright orange for because I had different fabric for it before. And as you can see, I didn't do the best job here, but that's okay. Um, I had a bright orange fabric here and I actually swapped it out because I realized when I went to sew it that I had made it too small. It needed to be wider here so that I could fold the fabric over and sew it. So I ended up buying new fabric, which I actually think suits suits this better um, because it's more in the peachy tones. But as a result, this orange was a little bright, but whatever. Um, I did go back and do a little bit of stitching here because you couldn't see the the rays that well. And I finished T on the back <laughs> like that in a kind of whimsical sort of way as if it was, you know, like vapor from a teacup. And then I sewed on the, the lining um, and it's done and we've used it. 
and I'll put a little bit of footage here on how it fits onto, uh, onto the teapot. Um, so you can see that I've got this green teapot. Doesn't match this in any way, but that's okay. Um, and well, I guess peach and green go nicely together. So anyway, um, one thing I would do differently next time. So I, just to recap, I had used an old sweater that I made years ago. It was actually the Coda by Olga Burayan. And I'd made it too long, and it never occurred to me at the time that I could like cut it. Um, and there was just slightly something a little weird fitting on the back. And then I got a stain on it. I did wear it, but I got a stain on it and I couldn't get the stain out. So I decided to felt the sweater. So um, definitely scrappy in that sense. And um, I cut this very straight down, but I didn't take into account the fact that there's a 3D aspect to sewing that you have to take into account that I find a little confounding sometimes. But I probably should have cut it out a little bit like this because once it's actually over the teapot, this goes in. Um, so if I were to make another one, I would keep that in mind because you can see it happen there. So it's a little snug on this side, but it does go on quite nicely. So I'm very, very happy about this project. Uh, for so many reasons. It, it, I felt like it helped me get over a few different blocks, mental blocks. First, there was the stitching mental block. And, you know, it is very naive looking. It's not perfect by any means, but it really doesn't matter. And I just had a lot of fun doing it. And it was a very creative project um, in terms of just coming up with this concept myself. And then the other thing that was a really good for me, I think was I had really started to get nervous about sewing again, and I really wanted to sew again. And this was the first sewing I had done, putting this lining together and sewing it onto here that I've done in like three years. And it was just, I, I actually had to get my sewing machine out. I had to make sure it worked. Um, I don't even remember what half the buttons are for anymore, <laughs> but it worked and I did it and it just kind of got me over that hump. Um, and so that's been really, really great. So yeah, so this will be in use. In fact, my arm just being under there is, is warm. Um, my husband was saying that the handle of the teapot stays warm and he said, I understand now why some of them have holes uh, for the handle um, so that the handle doesn't get hot. So that's a little interesting thing. So we'll see. I still have, uh, if I, maybe I'll make another one in the future. I still have bits of this sweater left over because obviously it was bigger than this. And so I'm, I'm thinking of things to do with those, with the extra part, with the sleeves. Uh, I was thinking of maybe making a Bodum because I do have a Bodum coffee maker, uh, maybe making um, some sort of a cozy for it and or maybe even just a hot plate of some kind. I was thinking of dyeing it with indigo, maybe turning it blue, because I have some in a bottle actually that's already done. So we'll see, but this was just, it was such a great project for me to get over different hurdles in my, in my making um, that I just had sort of created in my head. And the lining is so not perfect. It's a little bunchy in here but I don't care. It was just, I mean, it's a functional piece and I'm very proud of it. So that got me thinking um, about wanting to do some patchworking. And I've actually cut out fabrics uh, in squares and in three inch squares to make a little patchwork bag. But it, interestingly, I was having a little bit of a mental hurdle about that because I was like, oh, it has to be so precise. And then I thought, what if I just do, I had seen a bag on, I think by Lowland Originals on um, Instagram. She's a, she's a bag maker and makes bags out of bits and bobs of fabric. And so I thought, oh, why don't I do something like that where I just make rectangles. They don't even have to be the same length. I can cut it afterwards. It doesn't have to be quite so precise. So I cut out fabrics and I got so excited about the whole thing that I ended up making a full project out of it. The fabrics were all remnants because I used to make bags years ago. I had an Etsy shop called, little, called um, Serene Little Creep. What the heck was my shop's name? 
Serene Little Creek. No, Little Creek Designs. What the heck was it called? I think it was called Little Creek. Bags? Little Creek. Anyway, I had a shop on Etsy <laughs> that I don't remember the name of. And it was called Little Creek for sure because my last name uh, kind of means that. And so anyway, I had lots of lots of fabric bits. So I have ended up making this bag. So I just may put all these remnants together. And as you can see here, this was one little piece, that was another piece, and then there's a teeny weeny bit of orange on that side. But I ended up making this bag and I was so in love with it. And I had so much fun making it. I couldn't stop. I thought, oh, I'll just sew these pieces. And then I was like, okay, I gotta cut it all. Okay, I gotta iron it. Oh, maybe, let me get some denim. So I've got this dark denim that I have downstairs. And um, I thought, all right, let me cut out the, the width from the denim. And then I was like, oh, let me see if I got some lining. So I had some just very sort of nice lining there. And then I've never made this kind of a pole before where there is a gap, where it's like two pieces. So I looked up um, a channel that uh, has been recommended to me a few times called Sotak Handmade, S-O-T-A-K. And she gives great tutorials. I'll link her uh, down below actually. So I looked up um, how she had done the tab or whatever you call this um, on a bag and I just did it as well. Now next time I would make this a little bit taller. It's a little short, but she was making a small bag and I think this would have needed to be a little bit wider. But I had so much fun making this and it's gonna go into use soon. Um, that, I started making another one. And this is a totally scrappy stashy, Mal. So I have actually cut out the fabric for another bag. And some of them are the same, but I found other bits and bobs. And oh my goodness, I didn't realize that looks like a flag. <laughs> um, but yeah, just really, really fun. So I can see myself making a few more of these. Um, and you know, they're, they're just a really, really great fun thing to make um, so with leftover fabrics. And I align the fabrics at the top, but then they're all different lengths here. And then I just cut where I feel that you know, which, whichever one is the shortest fabric, and I think it was actually this blue one on this one, and then I'll cut some jean fabric accordingly and uh, take it from there. And so, you know, there's no necessarily, not necessarily a standard size. I think that this one will be a little smaller, well, actually almost the same size as my first one. But um, yeah, it's a little bit kind of like, you know, design it as you go, figure it out as you go. And um, and this was great because I used to make bags all the time and I was like, oh my gosh, what, how do I do that? Oh yes, you have to do this. Oh, how do I do that? Oh yes, you have to do that. And it was just really fun and extremely creative. So much so that I went to bed that night and I was just like manic with enthusiasm um, and I couldn't sleep. So yeah, so that was another two finished projects that are not knitting related, but I'll be back in a moment with the second knitting related one. Ta-da! So I actually ended up finishing the Salty Air Tea and am wearing it. So I, I really didn't expect to have it finished today, but after I finished the Tolsta, which I think was almost done the last time I podcasted, I really wanted to get this off the needles and wear it. This is the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin. And I used um, a beautiful yarn called Illimani Sabri, which is a mostly cotton with a little bit of alpaca. Um, so unlike the, the cotton cashmere, which is cotton with cashmere, this is cotton with alpaca. Illimani is a company that does a lot of yarns with alpaca. Um, I believe it's based in Peru. I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, they have beautiful yarns and I wanted to make the Salty Air Tea. 
So I specifically wanted to make this, uh, well, when I first started it, I wasn't thinking this, but I bought this dress, which is a dress with a gathered waist and it's got pockets and it's not the best fitting dress for me up here, but I bought it specifically because I actually really wanted to have it as a layering piece and I needed cropped sweaters for it. And I realized I actually only have one sweater that's cropped enough to wear with this. Well, maybe two. Um, one of them is one of my redunculus sweaters that has shrunk. Um, actually, it's not too far in color from this one. And then um, I think I have my lapis that I could wear with this dress, but I thought I really need a sweater for this. So I decided to make my salty air tea quite cropped um, to go with the dress and it, it just turned out to be a great, great length. Um, and this is a look that is kind of new to me. I've seen people wearing these kinds of dresses with sweaters and I always like it, but I've never found a dress that worked somehow. Um, but this one just fit really, really nicely. And so I thought I'm going to get it and this is going to be my layering dress. So I have made this sweater quite cropped and I had two skeins of this and it's a fingering weight yarn, um, about 400 gram, uh, 400 yards or meters about there per skein. And so in order to make this crop, I really only used about a skein and a half. If I had made it longer, I would have used closer to the two, but with two skeins, I was able to get a really great sweater for this. I have also some high-waisted pants um, as well as a couple of skirts that I'll be able to wear this sweater with. So I thought this is this is a great thing to make and it is such a pretty, pretty pattern. It's so pretty and there you have how it fits and it's just lovely. The lace on here is just beautiful. I honestly barely had to block it um, I really just wet it and lay it flat, but it, the, the lace was already looking really gorgeous before it was, it was, um, even blocked. So, so this is my second object that I finished, uh, for the summer. And I decided that this would probably be the end of, um, the end of my summer knitting for now. I kind of, I was really starting to feel like there was a little nip teeny weeny little nip in the air and um because of i mentioned my repetitive strain i'm sort of feeling like wool would probably be better for my hands so i decided that i'm going to move on to um, move on to more woolly things but yeah lovely pattern i gosh you know i could almost see myself making another one of these in a different color it's so pretty and it only used it used less than two skeins so Definitely, definitely one to, to make again. Beautiful, beautiful, very well written. Um, the increases here were, you needed to pay attention because they weren't just, e they weren't even, but it's very, very well written. I would say that this would be for an adventurous beginner. I would put it that way but I think it's uh, it's a really nice sweater. So yeah, lovely pattern, lovely yarn. Really also, I find that the cotton, when they add just a little something, it just totally changes the texture. And um, it's just a lovely, lovely feeling sweater. So there you go. Lots of finished objects for today. Um, two great summer sweaters. And let's move on to works in progress. So the first thing, I don't have a lot. Well, obviously the second bag is one work in progress. Um, as far as knitting, I have cast on two things. I haven't done any crocheting in the last three weeks. And I keep having in my mind that I really want to finish the one blanket that I'm so close to finishing. So I really need to get back to that. And if you've been around for a while, do you remember that I was making that pillow? I delayed the pillow because I knew that working the I found working with the big needles and the, the multiple strands of yarn I found difficult. It was a garter pillow. Um, so I didn't want to do it while my hands were a little bit compromised, but I really do want to get to that. 
So we'll see. But for now, in this bag that my friend Sue had given me for my birthday, sweater's gonna outgrow this, but for now it's in here. I cast on, and I think I mentioned this last time. Where is the tag? Using the Kettle Yarns Bayul, which is a yak silk merino blend. They don't tell you the proportions, but it is a yak silk merino blend, 400 yards, 366 meters. And it is in this colorway called Black Quartz. I cast on with this contrasts book for the Pearly Beach. So this sweater actually fulfills two of my make-alongs because that yarn has been in my stash since 2018, I'm gonna say. I haven't actually checked, but it's been there for a while. And um, it's also a Nordic pattern. So it's from this book, the contrast book by May UKP, and it's the Pearly Beach sweater, which has this lace and cable design on the front. So I feel like I've been making this ribbing forever. <laughs> um, it's been kind of slow, but I think I'm pretty much done the ribbing and I'm going to move on to the body of the sweater. Um, so that is my first work in progress. Um, the, the ribbing is being knit on three millimeter needles, but I will be moving up to three and a half millimeter needles. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I had mentioned last time that on Leanne's channel, The Nitty Stew, she had asked, what are you going to knit by the end of the year? And I had said that I would knit that. So I'm committed to making that. I am planning on going to Spain in November. Uh, my eldest child will be there study for the term, which is very exciting because I lived in Madrid for four years from 90 to 94. And so uh, when he said that he was planning on taking a term abroad, I was, and he said, you're gonna be happy about this mom because I'm going to Madrid. I was like, oh, I have to go to Madrid. So I'll be going to visit him um, and possibly with a friend of mine. So I'm very excited about that. And we were both in Spain together at one point. And then um, I will be going to Barcelona Knits. So I would like to have the Pearly Beach ready for that trip um, so that I could wear it because I think it'll be a really great sweater to have on that trip. So that is work in progress number two, uh, number one, I should say. Work in progress number two <clears throat> is combining these two yarns. So work in progress number two is also uh, a, something that I'd mentioned last time, which is the Naturlig Vis by Lone Kjelten, who is a Danish designer. So it fits also the LBK Nordic cow. And uh, one of these yarns does as well. So this oatmeal color, and it is the oatmeal colorway, uh, is holst garn in the super soft, which is 100% wool. And this gray cone here is woolly knit, family sounds, is woolly knit in the morning frost, I believe it's called. So I wasn't sure about this gray on its own. So I decided to swatch the two and see what would happen. And I really liked the outcome. Now I've just started the sweater and the, the beginning construction is rather complex, I must say. And this is how it's starting at the beginning. And I think that those things will end up being sewn on the back here. In true to Selma form, I did not read through the instructions. I probably should have. But I'll just show you the combination of the oatmeal and the gray create a really, really lovely warm color. Um, I really like it a lot. So I'm working on that as well. Um, so beautiful pattern, complicated beginning. I think once you get past the, the construction at the top, 
it'll be smooth sailing. The stitch pattern is super fun and super simple. And it is so nice to be working with a 4.5 millimeter needle, something a little bigger and, and with wool. I'm really glad to be working with some, just some real woolly wool. It's such a pleasure to work with. Um, so yeah, that is my second work in progress. Now I did also uh, wind up some yarn because one thing, one thing I realized I did not talk about last time was um, accessories. I told you about some of the sweaters that I would like to make for the Nordic cow, but I didn't talk about accessories. So there are a couple of accessories that I wanted to make. Um, one is the Vertices Unite. Now that is a pattern by Stephen West. Stephen West is not Nordic. Uh, he may have some heritage somewhere way in the back, but but um, I have some leftovers in Birkalanka, which is a Finnish yarn from um, my Silver Forest sweater, and I want to turn those into a Vertices Unite. I also have this wonderful yarn that my friend Minna in Finland, Minna Sorvala, gave me a couple of years ago by Lohitarin Luola. It is a silk wool blend, silk merino, 50-50. And she gave me two, two skeins of this. So in this turquoisey color and in this other, well, this one's more tealy and this one's more turquoisey. So I'm going to be making a shawl, not by a um, Nordic designer, but by Amba O'Brien, who I believe is in Australia. It's called the Kimba shawl. And I haven't actually cast on yet, um, but I'm going to be using these two for that. And I also have some navy, dark navy, um, woolly knit yarn upstairs. And I think I'm going to add that because this won't be sufficient for it. And I'm going to add that towards the end of the shawl. Um, so hopefully I'll be casting that on soon. And that will probably end up being a present actually for um, one of my in-laws. Um, there are three women in the family, and I think it'll end up being for one of them. I think. Not 100% sure. But these colors are, are, are drawing me to them as I think about these colors. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But anyway, that is what I'm going to be making. So that's two shawls that I would very much like to make during the Nordic Cal. Got a lot of plans. We'll see what ends up happening. And then there are two socks um, also. So as far as socks go, they're both actually works in progress uh, that I would very much like to finish. So the first one um, you've seen before if you've been around and it is the Auni socks uh, by um, Maria Costa Mavara, who is a Finnish designer and I made the first one and I really, really want to finish this um, and get the second one going. Uh, what's been stalling me is the very beginning of the sock is uh, is actually very um, labor intensive, I would say. And so that's been sort of slowing me down. But I am hoping to I am hoping to finish these during the cow. And I also really want to have their super woolly, woolly, gorgeous yarn. The yarn that I'm using is uh, a discontinued yarn. She's no longer. Um, she's no longer dying, but it was from Les Arts Textiles de Temiscuata. And this is her 40 BFL, 40 Merino with 20% um, nylon. And they're non-treated yarns, so they're non-superwash. And this is color number three. Nothing very exciting, but I read a beautiful, beautiful deep mustard color. So I'm hoping to have these finished. And then in this super duper fun bag that I got in Finland, and it's not an appropriate bag for socks really, but it's in there for now, is this lovely yarn that um, Jana of uh, knitting, uh, Finnish Knitting Stories had given me by Jalovilla. And this is the uh, Bassi uh, sock yarn, and it is a 85% wool and 15% nylon. And it is a thicker yarn and I literally have the cuff of one sock. So this is something else that I would like to finish during during the cow. 
So, so yeah, so there you go. Those are my forks in progress and future plans. <laughs> I wanted to mention one podcast from Podcast Corner. Um, somebody that is a new podcaster out of Colorado, and her name is Julie, and she has a podcast called The Nitty Cat. Um, and uh, she mentioned me, so I happened to check her out and, and enjoyed uh, her podcast. Uh, so I wanted to mention her too, in case you wanted to check out a new podcast. So hello, Julie, and thank you for mentioning me. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Everybody's waking up. <laughs> I just have a few last things that I wanted to mention. The knitting content is, is pretty much done. I got a lovely package. Um, she said anonymous. So I won't say who it is. But a knitting friend sent me this lovely handmade mitt with some soap and some teas and a book. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you so much because it was really a lovely, lovely gift and um, just really, really nice. So she sent me this hand washing mitt and I'm very excited to use it. Now that I've talked about it, I will. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. All right, just to finish off here, couple of things that have happened in the last three weeks. We went to a wedding, which was really fun. A friend was getting married, um, hadn't been to a wedding in a really long time. So that was really lovely. We've also been on a couple of really nice walks, which you'll see footage of at the end of the podcast. Um, we have a couple of areas um, in Ottawa. We have a lot of walking in Ottawa. So it's a beautiful city when it comes to nature. Um, there's a lot very within the city and close by. It's just a great city if you enjoy uh, nature but can't necessarily go far away. You don't have to in this city, which is really nice. Um, I've actually been off for the last three weeks, just took some leave to uh, kind of rest up a little bit. Um, as you know, I mentioned last time, and I want to thank you for all your lovely comments uh, that I was dealing with stuff related to my mum. It's sort of ongoing and I just needed some time to recuperate from that. Um, and I think that that's where some of the creativity from the sewing came as well. I'm starting to feel more like my, like feeling rested and feeling like I can take on the world again. Um, so I've been off and just enjoying uh, time visiting my mom and, and uh, trying to support her still. But um, things are things are taking shape there and um, settling in. So that's really good. Um, I went to see a great movie called The Lesson. Really interesting movie. My friend was saying it reminded her of a film noir. I was saying I felt like there was a tiny little bit of Woody Allen and a tiny little bit of Hitchcock. It was a really interesting movie called The Lesson and it had Julie Delpy, um, Richard E. Grant, and um, what's his name now? Daryl, Daryl McCormick. Daryl McCormick was in that fabulous movie called Good Luck to You, Leo Grand with Emma Thompson. Um, I've mentioned that movie before. I, I think I might have to watch it again. I enjoyed it so much. Um, and it's, but the lesson which these three actors are in um, is, is a very quiet thriller and it's really good. It's a quiet movie. It's slow, but it's really interesting. Um, at one point I was like, where is this going? But it was very good. Um, I finished The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver, uh, which I mentioned to you last time. Very interesting book, an older book of hers. Um, I'm really glad I listened to it. There were some complaints by others about the narrator. I actually thought the narrator was fine. Um, I didn't mind listening to her at all. Uh, I thought she she had a very Georgia-like accent and the characters are all from Georgia, so I thought that that suited it. She didn't do the different voices. She didn't change for any of the voices. Um, and I think that that's what people didn't like, but I actually thought she narrated well. She had good pacing. And um, I felt like she conveyed the humor in the story. 
especially with some of the characters, stories told from the perspective of the different women in the in the story, and um, and at moments it's quite funny. It's also a very serious story, but it's a really I thought it was historically really interesting as well because it takes place in the Congo at the time when the Congo was trying to become an independent nation. And unfortunately, it has a rather ugly, uh, ugly history. And, and it's also dealing with the whole colonialist past and the, the imperialistic past of, of, uh, of the Congo, but not only the Congo, many, many countries. I thought it was really interesting. It's a little bit hit you over the head at times, a little bit preachy at times, I would say, especially towards the end. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was still a very good book. And I've just started the sixth book in the Gamash series by Louise Penny, um, called Bury Your Dead. So that is, that's what's going on over here. Lots of, um, lots of quiet time and some making time and, um, recuperating time. So it's been a good three weeks for me. I have to say I'm feeling just like I just needed some time from the intensity of the whole situation with my mom. So it's been really good. So that's all that I have from you, for you today. Um, hope you've enjoyed this podcast. It's been lovely to spend some time with you. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.